8.2, finding the scalar equations of lines, aka Cartesian equations. So before we start this exercise, I want to go back to something that um, I mentioned on the last lesson, but I want to point out even a little more clearly now. Um, I told you that this was going to be a very important equation for you. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this and our other equation was y equals 3 halves x plus 4, which was the equivalent line in slope y-intercept form. So if you look at this equation, you remember from grade 9 that this m here is your slope. So m equals rise over run, which as a direction vector, as you know, would be 2, 3. So remember that the I think the biggest mistake people make is that they forget that this is y over x. Okay, so x, y, 2, 3. So this is 2, 3, but if you look at the a and b values here, so remember this is like ax plus by plus c equals 0, and your a, b here would be a, b would be 3 and minus 2. And if you compare these two, you can see that if I asked you what is the um, negative reciprocal of 3 over 2, you would say minus 2 over 3, right? And notice that that is AB. So AB here represents the normal or the perpendicular slope to the vector. So if you're given the normal, you can just plug it in right into this um, standard equation, which is also called the scalar or Cartesian equation. So that's going to come up in this next lesson. So if you're still a little, what going on here? Um, don't worry, I'm going to make it very clear in the next lesson. As well, um, in the very next lesson that I'm going to post, I'm going to do an exercise that I make my students do, and it's called Necessary Skills with Equations of Lines. So this goes over 10 different types of questions for two-dimensional vectors that you should know like the back of your hand. So I will do that with you in the next video, and um, I'll try to make a copy of it. I don't have one on file, but maybe if I take a picture and save it, I can post it and... Um, Put that as a link in the video. Okay, so back to section 8.2. Um, we have a point 2 minus 1 and a direction vector. And remember that for equations of vector equations of lines, all we need is a point in a direction vector. So that means that we list the point first, so it's 2 and minus 1, plus some scalar of the direction vector. So easy when you have these two, right? So remember that all the other points can be uh, found from the point 2 minus 1 and adding a scalar multiple of the slope. That's all we're doing here. Remember in grade 9 and you had, you know, like you had a point like this and you said the slope was 3 over 2. So you go up 3 over 2, bing, up 3 over 2, bing. Same thing that we're doing here by adding a scalar multiple of the direction vector. Okay, so parametric equations. Remember, parametric equations are representing x and y in terms of that parameter t. So my x parameter here, x par uh, parametric equation would be x equals 2 plus t, and y is going to be equal to minus 1 minus 3t. So far, so good. Now, in the next step, this is what we're doing in today's lesson, and that is finding this Cartesian equation. We're going to solve for t for each of these equations, and then we're going to set them equal to each other, and magically that's going to give us the Cartesian equation. So watch. If I want to solve for t here, I'd say t is equal to x minus 2, right, from this one. And for this one, I would have a little bit more work to do. I would say um, t is equal to, I'd have to take the y and add 1 and divide by minus 3. Okay, so I have t is equal to this and t is equal to that. 
And that means this is equal to that, right? It's just like me saying, if four is equal to two plus two, and four is equal to three plus one, then two plus two equals three plus one. Nothing fancy. Okay, so now that I have these two little equations, I'm gonna set this equal to this one. So I say x minus two is going to be equal to y plus one over minus three. And now all I want to do is um, rearrange this into the form ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. That's my Cartesian equation. So that's pretty easy for you, I'm sure. You'd say minus 3x plus 6 equals y plus 1. All I did was multiply by minus 3. And now I'm going to bring everything to one side. I want my a to be positive, so I'm going to bring everything to the right. So 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. And if you look at this equation now, you can see that the normal AB, AB, which is the normal, you can also write that as vector normal, is going to be equal to 3 and 1. So 3, 1 is the normal vector. So if I were to graph the line 3x plus y minus 5 equals 0 onto this little graph that I've put here, you would find the y-intercept, right? So when when x is 0 and y equals 0, um, when x equals 0, sorry, y is going to be equal to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my slope, um, my slope here was I had 1 minus 3. This, so the slope is minus 3 over 1. So I go down 3, 1, 2, 3 over 1. And you could also find the x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. And that would give you 5 over 3, which is right about here. And so if I drew this for you, this would be my line. Let's just put a line to it so you can see what I'm talking about here. So this would be 3x plus y minus 5 equals 0. And the normal, I said, was 3, 1. So watch. If I go 1, 2, 3 and up one, that would be about here, and if I draw that vector, if I drew it, <laughs> that vector, it's going to be perpendicular, perpendicular right here to that line. So the normal three, one, the normal three, one, vector normal three, one is going to be perpendicular to this line. And that again is simply a, b, right from here, three, one. Okay, so we're going to do some other things with that. Let's move on to another example. It says, find the vector, parametric, and scalar equations for the line passing through minus 5, 1, and minus 1, minus 2. Okay, the first thing we need to do is find a direction vector. Just like if you were in grade 9 and you were given two points, you would have to find the slope. So you would do rise over run. But in this case, all we have to do is subtract the vectors. So I want to know what, um, I didn't give a letter to these, but if this was a, b, we'd be doing b minus a. So the direction vector, m1, m2, or just m with a vector over it, is going to be minus 1, minus, minus 5. So that's 4, and minus, minus 2, minus 1 is minus 3. Okay, so that's my direction vector. You could also write it like this, 4 minus 3. So now what is the vector equation of the line? Well, you get to pick one of these points and use the direction vector. So I'm going to say the vector equation is, I'm going to use the smallest point, minus 1, minus 2. And to that, I'm going to add a scalar multiple of 4 and minus 3. And I'm going to say that t is an element of real numbers. So I can put any number in here, any decimal, any fraction, whatever I want to find all of the points on this line. It would take you forever. So what are the parametric equations? So remember, parametric equation means I'm going to say what x and y are equal to if I wanted to find any other points. So I'd say, well, any x value would be minus 1 
plus four t's, right? Minus one plus four t. And any y would be equal to minus two minus three t. So I'm just getting those from here, right? Minus two minus three t, that's my y and this was my x. Now solve each of these equations for t. So in this case, t would be equal to, I'm going to do x plus one divided by four. And in this case, I would say t is equal to y plus two divided by minus three. So far so good. And now to find the Cartesian equation, I'm going to set this equation equal to this one. It's really quite simple, isn't it? I'm sure you're laughing and saying, oh, Miss Havrat, you're going way too slow for me today. I am a whiz at this. Okay, now I want to um, multiply by minus three on this side and four on this side to get rid of these denominators. So I would have minus three times x plus one equals four times y plus two. And then the rest of it, of course, is nice basic math. Minus three x minus three equals 4y plus 8. Move everything to the right side, and I'm, the only reason I'm saying that in this case is because this is negative, and I want to make it positive. So 3x plus 4y, and you want it in the format x, y, like a x plus b, y plus c. And so I bring this to the other side. That gives me 11 equals 0. And there's your Cartesian equation. Okay, got that? So let's move on to the next example. Now, again, I'm going to go through, like I said, I'm going to do a nice exercise for you, showing you all the different things you should know. And some of these are going to show up right here on this page as well. So find the vector equation for the line y equals 3 halves x minus 1. Okay, so remember for a vector equation, I need a point and I need a direction vector. So can you tell me what the direction vector is for this? Hope you're saying it out loud. Yes, Ms. Avra, I know what it is. So this is rise over run. So y over x. So x, y, 2, 3. There's my direction vector. And I need a point. Well, you can pick any point you want. So let's say what's the point when x is 0? When x is 0, y is minus 1. So now I have everything I need, and this is really quite a simple calculation. So vector here is, uh, what did I say for a point? I want to do 0, 1 plus t times 2, 3, and t is an element of real numbers. Now, you say, well, used an s, so use a t. Which one do you want to use? doesn't matter. Parameters are usually s and t in um, vectors, so... We're using the t. Okay, so that's the equation. Given vector equation here equals minus 3, 5 plus s times 1 and minus 3. s is an element of real numbers. Find the equivalent slope y-intercept form. Okay, so what is the slope? The slope is, remember, rise over run, so it's minus 3 over 1. So the slope is, and I'm not going to put a vector over it because I'm just looking for m here. The slope is minus 3 over 1, so that's minus 3. And I'm going to use this point here that I've been given. So x is minus 3, y is equal to 5, and then I'm just going to plug that into y equals mx plus b. So 5 equals minus 3 times minus 3 plus b. That gives me positive 9 here. I subtract it. I get negative 4. And so y equals minus 3x minus 4. Ta-da! Magic. Okay, so here's another one that might look at it and go, oh no, find the Cartesian equation of the line through a Five, three. So that's an x and a y with a normal equals minus 1, 2. Okay, so right underneath what these things are. This is x, this is y. And I told you that the normal is a and b. 
So write out the Cartesian equation of the one. This is the easiest way to do it. Your teacher might do it another way, um, like a much longer way. <laughs> Why bother, right? So AX plus BY plus C equals zero. And you're going to use that a lot, even in the three dimension ones, when we have AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero, and you'll be given a normal. Okay, that's another day. Okay, so let's just plug in what we know. So A is minus one, X was five, plus B is two, and Y is three, plus C equals zero. So I'm solving for C instead of, you know, like in Y equals MX plus B, you solved for B. So if I do this, I would get minus five plus six. So that's six plus C equals one, oh, sorry, minus five plus six is one. So C equals minus one. And I already have A and B. So minus X plus two Y minus one equals zero, or better yet, you want to make the A positive. So I can multiply or divide if you want by a negative one <clears throat> to get this equation. Same thing, but this is a little lovelier. Okay, so what else are you going to do in this exercise 8.2? You're going to find angles. So question 10 from your homework on page 444 is not a lovely page. Determine the size of the acute angle. Okay, that's important that you read the question carefully to the nearest degree that is created by the intersection of the lines. And remember, I'm bringing back up this equation to find theta. So we want the inverse cos of the dot product of A and B or the magnitude of A and B. So for this question, um, you're not using the points. Don't make that mistake. You want the direction vectors because the direction vectors are going to tell you where, like along which line. This point could be anywhere, right? Anywhere in space. This is the important part here. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, Go ahead and figure out what A and B are here and my two my two little direction vectors. So I have um, direction vector A, so we'll call this one, uh, let's call this M1 equals 2 and minus 5. And this direction vector here is going to be minus 4 minus 1. Okay, so don't worry about the fact that this is negative. It's not going to change your solution in any way. So cos uh, negative one, or sorry, theta equals cos negative one of the dot product. So I'm dotting M1 with M2 here. So that gives me minus eight plus five. Uh, do you want me to write that all out? Let's do it. Let's do two times negative four plus minus five times minus one over and the magnitude of each of the vectors. So the square root of two squared plus minus five squared times the square root of minus four squared plus minus one squared. Okay, so that's going to give me cos negative one of, let's do this. So we had minus three in the top here We've done that previously. And 4 and 25 is square root 29. And 16 and 1 is square root 17. And to the nearest degree. So if I do the um, if I do the inverse cos of this, I'm going to get theta is approximately equal to 97.8 degrees. Now, that's not an acute angle. This is true. So the related acute angle of that would be um, 180 minus 97.8, whatever that is. Uh, I don't want to do that in my head. 180 minus 97.8. Distract 8 is 2, 9, 7, 2, 7, 9, 8. So theta acute is going to be 82.2 degrees. 
Okay, in the second example, this is still from question 10, this is 10b, they give you it in parametr the parametric equations of the two different vectors. So we have this one and we have this one. Now, could you figure out what the direction vectors are from these equations? And that's just another little skill that you need to know how to do, right? So if, um, I'm trying to see if we've got something here quickly that I can pull over. When we did the parametric equations, uh, not on that sheet. Sorry, I don't have one right away, but I think you'll get what I'm saying. The, the direction vectors here are these numbers here, right? Minus 5 and plus 4. And this one would be 1 and minus 6. So this is direction vector 2 here would be 1 minus 6. Now if you didn't have any t's, and sometimes that happens, that means that it would be 0, right? So you just have a slope of, um, well that wouldn't work for that one, but we'll talk about those later. And this one minus 5 and 4, so direction vector 1 is minus 5 and 4. Okay, so you get those right off there, and then you just go about doing your little calculation. So theta equals cos minus 1 of the dot product of these. So minus 5 times 1 plus 4 times minus 6 all over. <clears throat> the magnitude of this is square root of uh, 25 and 16. That's 41. And this one is going to be 36 plus 1 is 37. So that's cos negative 1 of, in the top here we have um, 25 minus, minus 5 minus 24, that's minus 29. And the square root of 41 times 37, I'm not going to try to do that in my head. And you know they're multiplied. And so if you do that properly, you should get theta is approximately equal to 138 degrees. But the related acute angle, related acute angle is 42 degrees, approximately equal to, to the nearest degree. Well, we should have rounded this up to 98 and 82, my mistake. Okay, and finally, if two lines have normals, N1 and N2, if the lines are parallel, then the normals are multiples of each other. So in other words, if I had um, a normal, let's do something really easy, like 1, 2, and normal 2 was 2, 4, then you'd say, oh, these are parallel and they're perpendicular if the dot product equals zero. And that would have been, um, well, you can go back and do any one of the ones that we did before. So we had like um, two, three and dotted with min uh, three and minus two, for instance. If you do the dot product of those, you'd get six minus six, right? Oops, my pencil's going. So that would be where the dot product would be zero if they are perpendicular. And that's it for 8.2. And like I said, the next lesson, I'll be doing an exercise called Necessary Skills with Equations of Lines. Hope to see you there. Um, keep working at it. It's not that hard. You can do really well on this section. I'm positive. Bye for now. And don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends to subscribe.